Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon has released, and while some people like myself said, shut up and take my money, understandably, a lot of other people are asking, what's the difference between this game and the last? I mean, besides just adding the word Ultra to the title. Is it worth spending another $40 or even $80 for both versions? To start, in my opinion, the short answer is yes. There was enough content and world building in this version that it does feel like a brand new game. But if that doesn't convince you, I've developed a list of 20 things that has changed since the last versions of Pokemon Sun and Moon, so that you can decide for yourself. Or maybe you've already bought the games and want to justify your purchase. Either way, let's get started. There are tons of new Pokemon to meet and catch on the islands. No, not brand new Pokemon, but a lot more variety from past games, giving you way more options when it comes to team building. New characters are introduced in this series, my favorites being the Surfer Trainers and the Ultra Recon Squad, who show up frequently throughout the game. I won't spoil too much here, but they are awesome and their theme music is one of my favorite new tracks. Your Rotom Dex plays a much wider role this time around. He gets sad if you don't interact with him. He provides you power-ups in the form of a lottery spin called Roto Boost, and you can also get two uses of your Z-Power when he likes you enough. Two words, Mantine, Surfing. A new mini-game to travel between islands that I don't hate. In fact, it's really, really fun, and if you get the high score on each island, you can even get a Surfing Pikachu. Finally. That's not all though, you can also use the beach points you earn from surfing to buy stat boosting medicine and new moves for your Pokemon. The new move tutors open up a whole new world of strategy. One of the biggest changes are the new locations to explore and ultra wormholes to navigate for hours of endgame content and legendary Pokemon hunting. Don't want to spoil too much again, but trust me, it's awesome. There's so much to look at, and I'm just putting it out there, but Game Freak, can we have a whole game set in Ultra Space? Number 14 is new hairstyles and new clothes. Complete the Pokédex for a nurse outfit if you're a girl, or a karate outfit if you're a boy. Or answer some trivia questions in Pikachu Valley to prove you're a true fan and get your hands on some fresh to death merch. Defeating bad guys in a Pikachu outfit, what else could you ask for? Now to be honest, this one isn't a positive to me, but you can't press A to mash Marlo's goo anymore. They took away our memes! The totem Pokemon you meet in your challenges are sometimes different. There are a few surprising ones, but trust me, the difficulty is still there. 2 vs 1 is never a fair fight. You can also collect stickers around Alola to get your own thick totem Pokemon on your team. Now this one is probably my favorite. There are new events throughout the game that make the world feel a little more alive. No, scratch that, not a little, a lot. Like the Haunted Trainer School, which is super spoopy. The Ditto 5, where the Dittos are turning into humans and you have to stop them. And guys, there's even an event where you attend a Pikachu wedding. This is the first game to really make it feel like this world is worth saving. Lots more Suda Widow. Who doesn't like more wood? Am I right? <laughs> Uh. Some of the trials you participated in before have changed, making them look kind of new. And there's even a new fairy trial along with a new totem Pokemon. Now this one strikes me right to my soul, but they took out the part where Lily talks about how wet she is. Which by the way, despite the memes, this was also a great character defining moment. So I'm actually really sad it's gone. On the bright side, executors can dance. The Elite Four is different and in my opinion is a lot, a lot easier this time around. You will not be spamming revives and potions most likely. And depending on who you are, this is a bad thing. There are new Ultra Beasts to discover and catch. And the other thing is that these Ultra Beasts are unlimited. You can catch as many as you want. You could just be walking, going about your island challenge when you find a Pokemon that you can actually interact with. It's the best thing ever. You can finally go on that mill tank date dream come true, worth every penny. Rainbow Rocket post game, where you defeat lovable villains of old, like Giovanni himself. Even better, these villains have succeeded in their own dimensions, which means they have their own respective legendary Pokemon. It is quite the challenge. The Battle Agency, located in the Festival Plaza. You get to wear sunglasses and borrow Pokemon to battle and rank up. The higher you rank up, the more powerful Pokemon you can borrow. It's surprisingly fun. Finally, and this is just my opinion, but it's just a more fleshed out game with way more things to do and see. The story is way bigger, and this time around, you actually feel like a hero who really does pull off the impossible, and everyone loves you for it. 
I don't know what else to say, it's just satisfying. In the end, I enjoyed every second of it, and I'm still not done after 40 hours of gameplay. I hope this video was able to help you make a choice or justify your purchase if you've already been playing this wonderful game. What are your favorite changes or new features to the series? Leave your answers in the comments below. Be a good guy, leave a like, subscribe for more content, and check out my other video talking about what they didn't change this time around. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm late for my date. Uh -huh.